We're going to go over a technique called contract relax stretching that you can use to improve your flexibility. We'll focus on some stretches for the legs, but once you understand this method, you'll be able to apply it to almost any stretch. We'll start with one for the hamstrings and I'll show you how it works. So for this first one, you're going to need something to help you pull your leg back with. I'll use this stretching strap, but it could just as easily be a towel or even your karate belt. All right? Loop it around your foot and just pull your straight leg back towards you until you feel a good stretch at the back of your thigh where the hamstrings are. So what should a good stretch feel like? Well, it can be like tension in the muscle or even a strong pulling sensation but it should not feel like pain. This is very important. <laughs> Don't confuse stretching with something like foam rolling. That's soft tissue mobilization, completely different. When you're stretching, if it hurts, you could be hurting yourself. So then you just have to back off a little bit, all right? So ideally, we would like to have this knee completely locked and the other leg down flat, but if you feel discomfort in your knee before you can feel a stretch in your muscle, then it's okay just to unlock this knee a little bit. Try not to bend your leg too much, otherwise you're not stretching your hamstrings anymore. Uh, similarly, if you have any low back discomfort, it's okay to bend the other knee up. So pick the position that's comfortable for you. So this is a pretty standard static stretch. For hamstrings, but we're going to add something extra. We're going to contract the same muscle group that we're trying to stretch right now by pressing in the opposite direction of the stretch. So you stretched your leg by bringing it back towards you. Now you're going to press your leg as if you're trying to bring it back down to the floor, but you're holding on tight with your hands. So you're pressing into the strap and your leg won't actually move. This is a isometric contraction for five to 10 seconds. And then as soon as you relax, you're gonna see if you can go a little further in the range. And you can see that worked out nicely. I got an extra two inches or so out of that. So this is now the new start position. You're gonna relax your leg into this position for 20 seconds. So the only thing that's working right now are your hands holding on the belt or the towel, whatever you're using. And then you're going to contract again. So go ahead and press into the band like you're trying to bring your leg down for five to 10 seconds, followed by relaxation and trying to go further in the range. So I love this method because you can see the change right away. So let's go ahead and try the other side. And just bring your leg up until you feel, find that first barrier to your stretch. All right. And you're going to relax into that first position for about 20 seconds. And I'll just mention that we're only going to do a couple of rounds right now. but. You can do as many rounds as you feel like you're still making gains in the range. And typically, I top out around three rounds, and then after that, I can't really get much further. So go ahead and contract by pressing into the band. So not with all your might, remember, just a moderate contraction for five to 10 seconds. And then as soon as you relax, See if you can go further and relax into that new position for 20 seconds. This is a stretch that uh, you can use if you don't have a partner to help you with a center kick stretch. This is a good substitute. And then go ahead and contract again, pressing. And then as soon as you relax, try to go further. So never giving up range, all right? So let's pick another stretch and see if we can apply what we know to contract relax, about contract relax stretching to it. So 
Let's everybody get into the karate push-up position. This one stretches your adductor primarily on the inside of your thigh. So you just go down to where you feel those come on tension and relax into that initial position for about 20 seconds. And think about how are we going to apply contract, relax, stretching to this position. Well, we know that we have to press in the opposite direction of the stretch. So I stretched my legs by bringing them away from each other. And now I want you to contract the muscles by pretending like you're trying to bring your legs back together underneath you again. So you're blocked by the floor, obviously, so your legs aren't going to actually go anywhere. That's your isometric contraction. So you're squeezing moderately for how long? That's right, five to ten seconds. And then relax and see if you can get a little bit deeper. Relaxing into this new position for about 20 seconds. And I'll mention that this stretch can be used when you don't have a partner to help you with side kick stretch. And you get to stretch both legs at the same time, so that's kind of a bonus. And then you're going to contract again, like you're trying to compress the floor with your feet underneath you for five to ten seconds. And when you relax, see if you can go even deeper. All right? So you would hold that position relaxed for 20 seconds. So bring your feet together slowly, and uh, we'll do one for the hip flexors the front of the hip. <clears throat> so this is, this position is called half kneeling. It's a pretty standard position to stretch hip flexors in. And what I'm doing is sort of lunging forward to try to open up this back hip. So a couple things to look out for is don't allow your low back to arch or your pelvis to tip forward. That's your body trying to get out of doing this stretch. So you have to shore, sort of shore up from the front. I just contracted my abdominals to see if I can keep my hips level as I uh, lunge forward. So as you're relaxing into the position for 20 seconds, ponder how will we apply the contraction to this position. Well, I stretched by opening up this angle and basically bringing my, making my leg go further behind me. Although I did that by making my body go forward. So when I contract, it's like I'm trying to close this angle or to bring my leg forward underneath me. So right now I want you to drive your knee into the floor moderately uh, you can use a pillow for comfort if you like, and you're just contracting by trying to bring your leg forward, driving your knee into the floor for five to ten seconds, and as soon as you relax, see if you can go a little farther forward. All right, so I want you to do one more round on that side, and then switch your legs, and I will explain the importance of this stretch. So if, you, if tight hip flexors limit hip extension, or making my leg go farther behind me, would tight hip flexors matter to my center kick? Well, most people would say no, because I don't have to make my leg go behind me to do a center kick, it's going in the opposite direction. But it's a trick question, because what's happening on the other side? So when I bring my right leg up, I have to do a kick. I have to thrust my hips into the kick. And I'll probably be leaning back a little to, as I extend my leg to keep my balance. All right? So with my foot planted on the floor, is this hip extension? You bet it is. So yes. Your hip flexors can hold down your center kick on the other side. Uh, additionally, they attach 
to your pelvis and to your lumbar spine from the front, deep down in. So when they're very, very tight, they're pulling on your low back all the time. So many people find that stretching their hip flexors helps alleviate back pain. All right, one more. For this one, you're going to need a chair. And so you just sit and cross your leg over. And my hands are here near my ankle just to make sure that my top leg doesn't slip off. And I'll show you from this angle. So you're going to straighten your back and try to lean forward. So it doesn't matter how far down your head goes, that's just me bending my spine. What you're trying to do is get your belly button closer to your lap. That's how I think of it. So this is for the posterior hip, the deep hip rotators. So you're going to feel all of that come on tension. This is a wonderful stretch to improve hip mobility, uh, very beneficial to our kicks, and also for proper alignment of your knee and your ankle in our stances, because it's actually your hip that controls most of that. All right, so to do the contraction phase for this one, uh, it's as if you're trying to bring your leg back down to the floor, but your other leg is in the way. So you're going to be pressing your top leg into your bottom leg for five to 10 seconds. And then as soon as you relax, try to lean a little bit farther forward, keeping your back straight. Now some of you just found out you have a really tight hip and it may be very difficult for you to lean forward at all. But don't worry if you feel a stretch, you're stretching. Okay, it doesn't matter how far you can go down. And I'm going to let you uh, try the other leg while I just cover this last important point, which is that many of you probably found out today with uh, one, one or two of these stretches that you have quite a difference from side to side in flexibility. So uh, that's really something important to pay attention about because uh, it's almost worse to be flexible on one side than it is to be tight on both sides equally. Uh, that asymmetry can just cause you to use each side of your body so differently, almost with every step you take, that it can set the stage for a repetitive strain injury somewhere down the line. So your goal is to make the tight side more like the other side. And what I do for myself on some stretches is I stretch the tight side first, go to the other side, and then go back and stretch the tight side again. Okay, so that is contract, relax, stretching, a very effective technique that can help you maximize the benefits of your stretching so that you can train safely and have more fun.